Eric Smith went missing November the 8th, 2013, and he has never been found since. There's been no trace of him. What happened to Eric? Was it Bigfoot? Was he snatched up by a UFO? Or was it simply foul play? So I just entered Tazewell County, which is very beautiful, and a coal mining town, and incidentally, Eric Smith was a coal miner, and was actually a foreman who supervised the day shift crew and was well respected by his workers who, you know, he may have been tough, but everyone that uh, David Politis spoke to and the newspapers said that, uh, they always said that Eric was very fair and a family man. Tell you a little bit more in just a minute.
I have reached uh, Cedar Bluff and Hurt Buggy Road and um, just going to drive up this road and this is the road that Eric Smith lived on. I'm sitting on the the end of I guess what is West Hurt Buggy Road. Uh, the sun is shining right on my face, and uh, you can see, you can hear behind me the Route 460 behind me, and and uh, Cedar Bluff is down in that valley. A nice quiet setting here and on the the morning of November the 8th Eric Smith told his wife that he was going to go up to the top of this hill right up there and go hunting. He was an avid hunter, so uh, he headed on up in the woods. He left his wallet in the house. He didn't have a cell phone with him. And he just walked on up in the woods and nobody saw him ever again. A little bit later, after Eric had gone hunting, his wife took one of her daughters and they went up to Buchanan and they visited with her mother and helped her put Christmas tree and decorations up. Spent pretty close the whole day and then she came uh, home and Eric wasn't there. She waited a little while and then she called the authorities. So immediately they came up and they started a search now in uh, David Politis's uh, missing 411 hunters book which you need to if you haven't read that or hadn't seen it you need to check it out uh, he says that uh, he had told his wife that he wasn't feeling that well and and in fact when I checked out other uh, newspaper articles and other stories on this case Eric had gone uh, a week prior to this on a uh, trip with a bunch of co-workers supervisors to Atlanta for a, a conference when he got back and you know this was 2013 when he got back that week he was not feeling well all week in fact he was feeling so bad that his wife actually called in for him which was kind of unusual because eric never missed work and his wife uh was the one that was calling in so he must have been pretty ill and then on the last day that he didn't go into work 
she actually just sent an email so that is curious the whole community got together and started searching for Eric and they searched for about six days the there's a close-knit family and anybody that knows Taswell Virginia in the county these communities are very close-knit uh, so all the miners during their time off they would go search they brought in now get this eight different sets of bloodhounds no scent was found on the property none the dogs just picked up nothing which is very very unusual except if you look at many of uh, the the stories from David Politis and his missing 411 cases Often the bloodhounds that go out on these searches don't pick up anything. And obviously people speculated, did, did he just run off? Uh, did he hurt himself? And everybody that, that was interviewed, that, that knew Eric, they all said he was just too conscientious. He would not do that to his wife or his kids to run off it's just not that kind of a person and so that just makes things really curious he's missing uh somewhere in these mountains something's picked him up or maybe he didn't disappear in these mountains i mean we we don't know and you know what is also strange is you know they they brought in helicopters they searched with infrared light. Uh, I mentioned the dogs. They didn't pick up a sense. And some of the dogs wouldn't even go in the woods. They just didn't venture forward. So that, it's just a very mysterious case. Now, like I mentioned, he went missing November the 13th. I'm sorry. He went missing November the 8th. 2013 nine years later November 26th 2022 the Virginia State Police has decided to reopen the case this case Eric Smith's case along with a lot of other cold cases and they're gonna try to settle this case but uh, do they have any new evidence they're not really saying I haven't heard anything in four months I keep checking the news but I still haven't heard anything about the Eric Smith case other than the fact that they said they were reopening the case and they're reopening it as a homicide do they know something and i guess we'll just have to stay tuned to find out exactly what they have or what they don't have in this case so it just it just baffles me i had to drive up here and see this location and it is very strange Another thing that I'll mention is that um, Eric was blind in one eye. Um, he was involved in an accident and 
and uh, while working and ended up being blind in one eye um, it's strange that in a lot of the uh, missing 411 cases that David Politis has put together uh, often people that go missing have a disability of some type and once again this case kind of fits that uh, that profile so the other, th other things that fit uh, David Pilatus' profile is that the, the dogs didn't get a scent uh, he left his cell phone behind and nothing's been found not a trace so you know we just don't we just don't know what has happened so I'm anxious to see if uh, anything comes about uh, with the state police investigation I just saw an entire Bigfoot family, so I've got to turn around and see if I can still see them. Yes, I can see them now. Looks like mom, dad, and a young, young little Bigfoot. That's pretty cool and he's even showing the mid tarsal break on the foot of the big foot that's cool